Hey guys, if you are totally new on this channel and like to listen true disturbing scary stories on daily basis, then make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, so you never miss when I upload. Let's not take much time and start with the stories. I encountered this very recently on the 21st of March, two days ago when I was asleep in my room alone. I'm a 18 female, living in Germany with my parents. In my family, it's only me, 18F, my mom, 38F, and my stepdad, 40M, living in a small apartment. I have my own bedroom as I'm an only child in my family. My parents took the smaller room and I had the master bedroom, which has a big window that is facing the back of our house. It's important for the story. For my bedroom, there's a big space outside our windows that's between every apartment unit over here, so there's no way someone would unintentionally stand near my window. You have to walk in and go for a few turns before coming here. I eventually fell asleep around 10 p.m. and I forgot to close my blackout curtains for my window. Even though it's a frosted window, anyone can only see through it if they stood close to it for a closer look. Exactly at 1.23 a.m., I remembered the time because I checked the time when I accidentally woke up. I heard three loud knocks on my room window, which eventually woke me up as I'm a very light sleeper. At where I'm sleeping, my window is on the right corner, and I can see whatever shadow that gets through it at day or night. On that night I didn't switch on any of my lights, so it was total darkness, except for my table lamp that was shined at me at highest brightness. At first I was sleeping while facing my room door, which is on my left, so I had an automatic response to turn my head and looked at what's knocking on my window. To my surprise, I saw a silhouette of a man's head that was clearly visible on my window. I had a goosebump and I froze because I was unsure of what to do as the curtains wide open, so obviously that man can see me through my window. Despite my parents' room being right next to mine, I went into shock and had to call my mom. Of course she is sleeping at that time to help me check if I was tripping and to close my curtains for me. I told her what I saw afterwards. In the end she advised me to sleep in the living room for the meantime to calm myself down. I felt really uneasy that night. I couldn't go back to sleep. Since I stayed awake that same night, I heard three more knocks coming from my bedroom at 3 a.m., which of course I had to assume it came from the window. Before this happened, my curtains were already closed and blocking my window's view, so I thought that it'll be fine for me to go ahead and get a little look on who or what knocked on the window. The only difference this time is that the knock was louder but slower, like the ones you would experience as if you're in an old haunted house. Come to think about it until now. I wished I stayed curious and stayed in my living room. I had my face and hand holding onto the window since I had to get a closer and clearer look since I didn't saw a silhouette when I was standing from a distance from the window. And me, still being paranoid from what happened hours before, I saw a man who's around 180 centimeters standing outside my room window, about four meters apart, standing and staring straight right at me, who's currently frozen in place at the window when I saw him wearing gray long pants and a black t-shirt, a really, really pale skin. It looked as if he had no expression when he saw me. By the time it happened, I wasn't really sure if it was the same man that stood outside at around 1.30 a.m. As much as I was tired that night, I knew I wasn't hearing things or seeing hallucinations. I was perfectly wide awake when I saw that man. The most terrifying thing is that I don't know who is that man, and I am also thankful to God that this thing only happens once, and not much happened that night. Otherwise, the condition can go more than worse than that. This happened to me around two months ago, I, 19 female, have been working for a large department store in the UK for just over a year now. This story happened when I was 17. 
It was late evening, around 10 p.m. or so, as we stay open late for the Christmas rush. I was walking across the shop floor when a man brushed very close to me. I'm often in my own world at work and this made me jump a little. He must have noticed this because he said, Hello? I responded and he asked me how I as. I said, Good. And you? He nodded and walked towards the doors out into the car park. I didn't think much of this at all, but it did catch me off guard. I decided to walk across to the other side of the shop, bear in mind the floor plan is massive, and continue tidying rails there. I hear a man shout from a few meters away, and I look up to see the same guy again. It's only now that I really took notice of his appearance. He had a large tattoo of a dagger on his right cheekbone, and was wearing a black jumper with the hood pulled up. He was about a foot taller than me, and clearly much older around his late thirties. I asked him if he needed any help, and he gestured for me to come closer to him. I tend to freeze and follow instructions in this situation, which is not exactly the best survival instinct. I naively thought that he just wanted to know which exit he needed. He asked me what my name was, and I told him. You've got really pretty eyes, he said, and at this point I was getting a bit freaked out. I thanked him hesitantly and turned to leave, but he put his hand on my forearm. Again, I kind of just froze. Have you got a boyfriend? Have you got Snapchat? Can I get your number? He became more and more persistent, and I just wanted him to leave. I told him that number one, I was working, and number two, I'm underage. He then asked me how old I was, and I told him I was 16. Again, I don't know why I answered him, but my brain just shuts down. To which he responded, it could work. At this point, I was really shaken up and didn't know what to do. Thankfully, one of my male colleagues walked up to me to ask a question, making him leave, winking at me as he did so. Noticing my distress, he asked me what had happened and I explained the situation. He urged me to report it, but I was hesitant as I didn't want to inconvenience anyone or get them into trouble. However, there are a lot of teenage girls that work in the shop, and I wouldn't want them to be targeted, so I told one of the managers. They notified the store security and sent me off the shop floor to get some coffee and calm down. I came back, finished my shift, and went to leave. The security guy stopped me on my way out and told me that he didn't mean to alarm me, but they had managed to track the man's car, and he was parked inside it. They said there was a high probability he was waiting for me, and I shouldn't go out there by myself, just as a precaution. He escorted me to my mum's car, and we drove home. I'm so thankful that nothing ended up happening to me that night. I often think about what would have happened if my friend didn't persuade me to report it, and I went out alone. That was my most disturbing experience as a teenager girl. My friend and I encountered two creepy men on a camping trip and ignored alarm bells until late into the night, when we fled full of terror. I believe they would have killed us, or worse, if we'd stayed there. I think my friend and I would have been raped, or otherwise harmed, if we hadn't listened to our guts. I was 18, my friend 16. I had just graduated high school, and we decided to go camping overnight. Both of us are female but it was a safe area close to home, so we weren't worried. We were making dinner when a man with fishing gear walks into view of our campsite from up the canyon in the river. He asked if he could cut through our site to the road. Nothing seemed unusual, so we said sure. He stopped in the middle of our site and asked us what we were making. Really just made polite small talk. But then his questions started getting... uncomfortable. How old are you guys? Where are you from? How long are you planning to be up here? Is it just you two up here? I'll admit, some little part of me felt uneasy, but my friend and I were naive. We answered every single question and even offered the guy some food. He declined the food and headed out of our campsite and down the canyon. A couple hours later, 
He and another middle-aged man walk up the canyon, from the direction the first man left in, and strolled right into our campsite. The first one took us up on our earlier offer for some dinner, and really just sat there. The new guy asked us a lot of questions, most along the same vein as the first guy. This felt uncomfortable. I was uneasy, but I didn't want to be rude. After a while, they thanked us for the chat and left our campsite, heading up the canyon. Away from where we assumed they were camped. This is when subtle alarm bells became a little less subtle. My friend and I ate and sat by the fire well into the evening past dark, laughing and having fun. However, we both watched the road the whole time, and those men never went back down the canyon. Now I concede that they may have simply had a fishing base lower in the canyon, and their campsite higher, but every ounce of self-preservation was on edge at this point. My intuition screamed for me to reconsider. I was desperate to enjoy this camping trip, though, and I didn't sat anything. But God, the tension was thick in the air between my friend and I. We were both uneasy, and did what we could to fill the silence between us. Eventually, she said, You know the worst part about camping by a river? My stomach sank. Of course I knew. Here in northern Utah, where the rivers are fed largely by runoff and they traipse down steep mountains, they are loud. You can't hear anything over them, I responded. She nodded. You think we should leave, don't you? She said she didn't feel good about the situation. At this point in our lives, we were both staunch Mormons. I am no longer. So we said a prayer. I now see this as me consciously and fully welcoming the voice of my intuition into my decision-making process. Clear as fucking day, we both knew we had to get out. As soon as we really stopped pushing down that intuition in favor of having a fun night, all bets were off. Terror filled us and we threw everything haphazardously into my car before booking it down the canyon. The terror wouldn't leave us until we got off the dirt road of the canyon fork onto the main paved road out of the mountains into town. We both watched the rear view the whole time, praying we never saw headlights behind us. As soon as we had a signal, we called my dad and told him what had happened. He told us to get the hell out of there and make sure we weren't being followed. We ended up sleeping, safe and sound, in my friend's backyard that night. Knowing what I do now as a sequel assault therapist, I am almost certain those men had ill intentions for us that night. I was 32, working as a waitress at a quaint Italian cafe nestled in a suburban corner of the Bay Area. Lunch shifts were my domain, and I often found myself running the show with just me and the kitchen staff. It was a routine I had grown accustomed to, until one fateful day when a peculiar encounter left me questioning everything. An older man sauntered into the cafe, his presence casting a subtle shadow over the bustling atmosphere. There was something about him, a certain air that set off alarm bells in the back of my mind. He exuded a vibe that reminded me of characters from mob dramas, and I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in my gut. Good afternoon, he greeted, his voice smooth, yet tinged with an underlying edge. I'd like to purchase a gift card, please. I obliged, processing the transaction with practiced efficiency but his next request gave me pause. He wanted me to hold on to the gift card for his friend, who would pick it up later. It struck me as odd, but I plastered on a smile and nodded, masking my discomfort as I handed over the card. As he left, he slipped me a phone number, insisting that I call to inform his friend when the card was ready for pickup. Every instinct in me screamed that something wasn't right, but I pushed the feeling aside telling myself it was just another odd encounter in the service industry. Weeks passed, and I had almost forgotten about the strange encounter until the man returned, 
his presence sending a chill down my spine. This time, there was an urgency in his demeanor as he demanded to speak with me. My manager intervened, her voice firm as she ordered him to leave or face the consequences. As I was ushered to the safety of the back room, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gripped me. What was this man's agenda, and why was he so insistent on speaking with me? It haunted me long after he left, leaving me to wonder about the sinister scheme he had attempted to ensnare me in. Even now, years later, the memory still lingers, a reminder of the shadows that lurk beneath the surface of even the most ordinary of places. It serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder to trust my instincts and never underestimate the darkness that can lurk behind a friendly smile. Thanks for watching the video till the end. Have a nice day.